Hi guys, Tarantula Sam here and welcome to my channel. Here in front of the camera I have my Brecky Pelma Vagans and this video is going to be somewhat about her, um, but uh, it's also going to be on Tarantula First Aid. Now this video is going to be pretty narrow in scope. It's just going to cover an incident I had with my Vagans here last week um, and uh, how I treated that. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump in and tell you what happened. So I actually came home from work a few days ago and noticed that she had a few droplets on her abdomen, just right in this area. I initially didn't think much of this. It was clear. I thought maybe she'd gotten into her water dish and just gotten some droplets on her. Um, but then I took a paper towel and I uh, just kind of wicked it up with the edge of the paper towel and it kind of absorbed it all up. And she acted super lethargic, which is uh, very out of character for her. She's usually pretty defensive and she didn't move at all. Um, when I touched her. So um, I uh, decided to check on her again uh, about a half hour later and the droplets were back. So at this point I knew I had a problem. I knew that she was bleeding and uh, I knew I needed to take care of that. Um, bleeding for tarantulas, especially from their abdomen, can be pretty dangerous uh, and uh, a lot of times results in them dying. Um, and I really didn't want that to happen. So uh, I tried to figure something out to help her, and I was able to treat her and help her. Um, so tarantulas don't actually have blood. They have what's called hemolymph. Uh, it's similar to our blood, but uh, a little different. Um, and it's important for their bodies. Um, the way their bodies function is somewhat hydraulically, like a hydraulic machine. Um, some of their joints are moved uh, with the pressure of their uh, hemolymph. And... Uh, that uh, helps uh, helps them move, and they need to have this uh, pressure and adequate amount of uh, of of liquid in them to uh, to function. Um, so what I first did for her was fill up her water dish all the way in case she needed to uh, get a drink uh, and replace some of the uh, lost moisture. Um, second thing I did was I actually got on arachno boards and uh, shot out a question to everybody to see what everybody's opinion was on me intervening or if I should leave her alone and what I should do if I intervene. I did read in a book that I have, it's an older book on tarantulas, um, that uh, in the case of uh, abdominal bleeding that you can use a dab of super glue or you can use a dab of petroleum, petroleum jelly to block that uh, the site of the bleeding. Um, but uh, when I asked on arachno boards, a few people suggested actually using cornstarch as well. Um, and that's actually what I ended up doing. Um, I do want to go on a tangent here and talk about super glue for a minute. Um, super glue can be very dangerous, and I would never suggest using super glue um, on your tarantula. The reasons being it's very sticky, so if I were to put some on her, she could have potentially stuck, say, a leg to her abdomen, uh, and that would have been a big problem. Um, also, I recently saw on a forum that someone had tried to use super glue to um, block an abdominal puncture, and they actually covered their spider's anus, uh, and it resulted in their spider dying. So um, I wouldn't use super glue. So what I actually did was I just took some uh, cornstarch and just right it from my pantry in my kitchen, and uh, I used a Q-tip. I'm gonna go out of focus here a little bit, sorry, and just gently brushed it onto the bleeding site with the Q-tip like that. Um, and I didn't put a whole lot on, just a little bit, just to make sure I covered that whole side of the bleeding area. Uh, and then I left her alone and waited and waited to see what would happen. Um, here is a picture of what she looked like uh, shortly after I put the cornstarch on her abdomen. It uh, quickly uh, started reacting with the bleeding site um, to uh, coagulate uh, the hemolymph that was, that was coming out, and it kind of ended up creating this paste. Uh, over over the, uh, the the site where she was bleeding, um, and it worked quite well. Uh, Cornstarch is, after all, like a thickening agent, um, so uh, that uh, that helped. And it this paste that was created kind of sealed off um, the bleeding site. Um, so what also shortly happened after uh, I uh, blocked the 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 bleeding site with the cornstarch is that she molted. Um, which I thought was great. Uh, her new abdomen has no signs of uh, any issues uh, in the area where that she was bleeding from. Um, so uh, I think that ended up working out great for her. I do wonder, though, how successful this would have been. Say she would have somehow punctured herself 
months from a molt. Um, I wonder uh, how successful this this would be. I'm not sure how uh, effective their bodies are at repairing themselves at, at that point, um, whether they're so far from molting. If uh, one of you guys knows, uh, please chime in in the comments and tell me. I'd be I'd be very curious to know. But anyways, I did want to share that with you guys and let you know how uh, I uh, took care of that problem and kind of the problem that I had. I'm still not quite sure how she punctured her abdomen. There's nothing sharp in her enclosure. There is not a great distance from the top of her enclosure to the substrate. Um, so I'm really not sure what happened. I do maybe speculate that she was really close to molting and she had a lot of pressure in her abdomen and maybe she got some sort of micro tear, but uh, I'm not sure how likely that would be or not but uh, I'm glad that she's okay and she's doing well um, and I wanted to share that with you guys I hope this video was interesting and uh, or maybe helpful to you guys um, and thank you for watching uh, until next time bye